America, we stand for freedom. Though freedom is never really free, we yearn and strive for government, protecting our liberty. Good evening and welcome to your Right to Know by the Fitchburg Republican City Committee. My name is Mary Lotz and I will be your host for this evening's show. Joining me tonight is of course my co-host, typical co-host, usual co-host and co-pilot, attorney Andrew Kuter. Andrew, welcome. Thank you, Mary. Tonight he's going to be part of the panel in the discussion. And again, a friend of ours, Morgan Jelanowski, who is a gun rights enthusiast and gunsmith. Thank you so much for coming all the way from... Um, Templeton to be with us tonight. So tonight we're actually, oh, before I get started, I'd like to welcome not only our guest here in the studio, but our viewers to the new studio at FATV, which we're sitting in tonight, which is by Workers' Credit Union at FATV. And we really would like to thank Workers' Credit Union for supporting uh, free cable access TV in Fitchburg because it's a community service that everyone needs to be involved in. So as we get started tonight, we're going to really talk about a movement that's just kind of taking the nation by storm, Con uh, state by state, but really even within the states, county by county, city by town. And this is called the 2A Sanctuary Program or the Gu Sanctuary Gun Program. And it's really being mimicked after the sanctuary program that has been started uh, to support immigration in our cities and communities. So as we start, I'd like a definition. I'd like to kind of set the stage by starting out with some definitions. And for that, I'm going to call on Attorney Kuchar. So Andrew, please talk about, give us a definition, our viewers, of what the sanctuary movement is about in immigration and how this is transitioning to gun rights. Well, initially when the immigration sanctuary movement started, cities and towns across the country, specifically in Massachusetts, uh, places like Cambridge, Somerville, uh, Framingham, and a few others, uh, basically said, well, we think the immigration laws of the United States <coughs> are draconian, uh, violates people's rights, and we're not going to expend the resources uh, and abide by what the ICE agents want. In fact, very specifically, there was a, uh, a judge who got thrown off the bench because she actively participated in uh, letting an illegal immigrant escape mm -hmm. ICE custody. Right. That was um, quite a popular ca famous it was, case. It was. And so this first started in Missouri, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Now this is, we're transitioning the, the now two, to the 2A. The 2A, the two -way the, sanctuary movement. 2A being Second mm -hmm. Amendment. Correct. And the 2A sanctuary movement started in Missouri a few years ago, mm -hmm. uh, but really it really came to light most recently in Virginia. And basically what happened was Mike Bloomberg sank a lot of money into, in Virginia. into Virginia, into the most recent election in Virginia. And he essentially used this money to turn the House and the, the Senate Democrat. They already had a Democrat um, governor, uh, Governor Northrop, and who is himself without controversy, not without controversy. That's true. He's but also known issues. as Governor Blackface due to a uh, due and, to a picture and that the he's support for end life murder correct, at birth. Correct. So they used this opportunity even before anybody was sworn in. They pre-filed anti-gun bills. Uh, one bill was for the red flag law, one was for the actual confiscation of um, semi-automatic rifles, uh, most specifically the AR-15 style rifles. Uh, there is a ban on how many guns you could purchase in a single month. Um, there are also, uh, they're also trying to ban or make it very difficult, it's not an outright ban, indoor shooting ranges where people would actually utilize you know in practice with their firearms. So many of us just happened to see on TV this past Monday 
that there was a big rally in mm -hmm. Virginia, which you didn't go to, but you had a lot of friends who went yep. to. And I'd like to actually touch on that. But th so these people went to Virginia specifically to sort of activate, become activist against these changes that Virginia is trying to impose. Yes, yes. Okay. Which there was, there was about, the uh, uh, official count was there about 22,000 people. Um, if you take a look at the photographs, and Morgan, I know you've seen photographs of this as mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. I think those numbers are deflated significantly. You know, I think there was a lot more than what they're reporting. So why don't we talk about the, this whole um, issue that happened on Monday, why it happened, what was the purpose of it, and what was, so what did people see? Because I know there were people that were, and the press included, were fearful that it would be like armed militias coming into town and, and everybody should hide the children and women under the beds because these people were going to wreak havoc. And that's not what happened, was it? I think what actually happened is um, a lot of uh, armed gentlemen went down, ladies I'm sure, went down and they were ladies and gentlemen and they, they expressed their, their interests uh, and they expressed their concerns as uh, politely as they could. As um, Second Amendment supporters. Yep. Uh, everybody that, I, the gentleman that I know that went down, went down extremely well armed, um, hoping for the best and fortunately the best uh, is exactly what mm -hmm. happened. Um, but they went down to express their opinion about um, the proposed legislation in Virginia and their opinion in general. And uh, interestingly, even with all of those people in that relatively small neighborhood, uh, there were no, um, there's no reports of any violence of any mm -hmm. kind, mm -hmm. uh, no, no general law breaking that I'm aware of, and I'm not saying it didn't happen, mm -hmm. but generally speaking, uh, the media is going to be all over anybody, you know, uh, pushing an old lady into the road or, or whatever, right. whatever might have happened, we're going to know about it, and there's really, there's been nothing reported. Nothing. There was, there was one, one arrest out of, sure. yep. let's <clears throat> take, let's take their numbers, 22,000 people, there was one arrest. And that's a conservative assessment a of conservative how many people assessment came out. of how many people yep. and from our understanding it was because he he was wearing a mask yep that, my know. understanding is that he was wearing a face mask of some kind and if i understand the uh, virginia law or whatever whatever the whatever the statute was he's not he wasn't allowed to be wearing a face mask he was he was arrested that's what i know mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. I, and i don't know and all the facts and peaceably taken away my understanding yeah yeah. So now, as we look at the sanctuary, the 2A sanctuary or the gun sanctuary, where is it going? Because as I was doing research, this has really taken hold throughout the states. Now, granted, it's occurring more in rural states, Midwestern states, states that have a lot of hunting and land and, and, a, and is not as densely populated as, the, we'll say, the Northeast. But so where is it actually now going? Are there states in the United States that already now have a 2A law? Or is this still under the radar in terms of law? Is this just still in the municipality, uh, counties, towns, cities? Or is this being followed statewide in any state? I think, I think a few states, uh, Missouri, as we mentioned, I believe, I believe Missouri uh, voted that as a law that they were inclined, I don't know how to phrase it, they are inclined to disregard federal statutes that they deemed unconstitutional. That said, as, to, as far as actually what has been uh, turned into law, I can't speak okay. quite intelligently on that one. However, what we're finding a lot is uh, when you have county government, upstate New York, for example, mm -hmm. uh, with the SAFE Act, most, the, the overwhelming majority of the sheriff, uh, the, the actual sheriffs up there who uh -huh. are inherently, that's, thank you, who are inherently the law enforcers have openly said, we're not going to enforce these laws. They're unconstitutional. It's not going to happen. In a lot of the other states, you have similar governments that we don't have here in Massachusetts. We do, but we don't typically Ooh. utilize sheriffs and, and right. such. Right, we're as, more cities and towns. Right, where in most of these um, uh, free states is what we jokingly call them. Um, most of these free states, they're basically saying, these rules are ridiculous, they're not gonna save anything and we're not gonna enforce them. Is, is, and they're publicly saying that, which is what's most important. Okay, so what would this actually look like? We'll just, as, a, as an example, we'll just say Fitchburg. Mm -hmm. The 
somebody, so who in Fitchburg would say, we want to make Fitchburg a sanctuary to a state? Is it our mayor? Is it the city council? It would probably it, start with the city council. Uh, it, and that would be because of people mm -hmm. appealing to their city councilors, which you are now one. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Thank Ward you. 3. So people would come to the city council and get that started and probably also work through the police department yep. and get that started so the the sort of rumblings of discontent would start yeah and then the city would have to guide the police chief and the police force right. to stand back at the end of the day, most laws, uh, whether we like to acknowledge it or not, most laws are arbitrary mm -hmm. and they're enforced based on the politicians who see fit to have enforced what laws they want enforced. So if, uh, in, in Attorney Kuchar's uh, example, if the population of his district say we don't want these things enforced, they tell, they tell Attorney Kuchar, he brings that up at you know the appropriate meetings and it, and it sort of trickles down in theory from there now whether whatever the opinion it is viewed uh, in other wards or other districts remains to be seen but um. so Massachusetts has gun laws mm -hmm. these gun laws that Massachusetts, some, of the strictest in the nation. some very strict gun laws some of them are right from the federal they're they're taken right from the federal the mm -hmm. fact that you as a uh, former gun <coughs> shop owner you have to follow to the letter of the law in terms of selling weapons firearms to people who have gun licenses universal background checks mm -hmm. or or reporting to the to the ATF. To the feds? Yeah, the ATF, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> the Department of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. firearms. That always seems like, I, I don't know, that, that all seems so, a little too... Sounds like more of a, fun, of a fun store to go to. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. I'm, yes. you know, I'm, but anyway, okay, the ATF. So, so we follow state laws, and then we have, under that we have, I mean, we follow, the state follows federal laws, and then under that the state implies or imposes their own laws. And we saw a very good example of this a few years ago when uh, we had the ban put on yeah, AR. The, the Maura AK. Healy uh, edict of, 20, of July of 2016, yeah. where she basically just read the law and said, well, I interpret it this way. Mm -hmm. And you know, in my in my opinion, that's unconstitutional. Her job is not to interpret the law. But just overnight, just like this, yep. within hours. Both both Morgan and I were were well aware of what was going on, and yeah, literally within hours. You yep. could no longer sell a certain class that is correct, of yeah. weapon for the prior what 18 years or so. Everybody had accepted the way business was going to be done. What was what firearms were acceptable, what weren't. Uh, and uh, from a public standpoint, she literally woke up one morning and said. Not anymore, because I'm reinterpreting in that. And, and part of those 18 years, two of them were, uh, she had been serving as the uh, Attorney General for two of them already, and had previously accepted how business was to be done, and then uh, decided for, the reason she decided is for another show, I suppose, but just decided she's gonna reinterpret how she enforces the law. And the key here is as a shop, she can just show up, pull my license, and I can't sell anything anymore. So that's that's her strongest way of uh, enforcing. Enforcing. Legally or otherwise, that's her easiest way to do it. All right, so going back to our Sanctuary 2, 2A and the city of Fitchburg. So we decide that we do not want to follow some of these laws. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that not following any laws, I no longer <coughs> have to take a gun class to get my license to carry well I mean that and I could go to your gun store and just say hi I'm Mary and I'm here and I want to buy a weapon to which you say do you have a license and I'll say no I don't need one anymore <laughs> um, or I don't even have a a gun class. I don't even know how to fire mm -hmm. a weapon or load a weapon. I mean, I, you know, potentially I would be the world's most dangerous person owning this firearm. But because of these new sanctuary laws, are these laws then going to allow me to do things? No age restrictions for purchase? Um, I, I don't know. That would, that, that would be ultimately... So where do these sanctuaries, if we bring these out and we allow it to happen? 
It would, it would basically be, in my, in my theory, and Morgan, maybe you can back me up, is what laws we deem to be unconstitutional. Like, if we say, if we say well, I think that the suitability standard for, for that police chiefs have, even though you're not barred by anything on your criminal record from obtaining a license to carry or a, or a gun license, uh, we could, you could say, well, that, I think that violates the, the uh, Constitution, the Second Amendment, so we're not going to, we're going to basically scratch that out, we're not going to do that. Chief, you, you have no authority to say who's suitable and who's not. If they don't have a record, you have to give them a license. Okay. You so know, so that, that, would, that would be one aspect of it. <clears throat> it would be uh, basically the the discretion that that some of that currently the authorities would have to say no I don't think you should have a license or yes you can have a license that that discretion would get wiped out and there are abuses of this discretion I've I see that well, all the time in, all my, the time in, in my le in my law practice yeah. you know where the police chief says I don't think you're suitable to have a license well why not well you know, 20 years ago, you were charged with a DUI. Well, was this person convicted? Well, no, but just because she has that on her record, I don't think she's suitable. In mm -hmm. fact, that's exactly what happened in a case that I worked on. I filed in court to discuss this in front of the judge. Before we even got in front of the judge, the chief of police called me up and said, yeah, I'm going to reverse my decision because he knew it was it was bull bleep. It, well, it was arbitrary. Exactly. Arbitrary, and capricious, capricious. And, abuses, and abuse of discretion. Well, because then isn't a lot of this, so we're talking law, and I do agree with you, Morgan, when you said most laws on the books are, are not always followed and interpreted at the same depth. Yeah. I mean, we all know that we can target certain populations, we can target certain people. We close our <coughs> eyes to this population in this group, and we and we allow and we really focus down mm -hmm. on this group and I think that's where you get your civil rights issues that that frequently come up but so what we're really looking at then is when we say sanctuary we're not just erasing mm -hmm. the application of all right. uh, it would it would be laws what would we and what would we find go back to the wild west right it would what would we find unconstitutional <clears throat> Because the the whole premise of the the two way sanctuary and Morgan, I mean, if if you disagree or if you agree, back me up. Um, but it's what we determine to be unconstitutional. Like, say, for instance, the assault weapon ban. All right, mm -hmm. if somebody is caught with an assault weapon, which is a semi automatic, you know, uh, semi automatic rifle that has what five different features uh, has. Two or more evil, uh, right. more than two evil features. More than two so evil features. And actually, a couple of months ago, we did the show specifically where the two of you mm -hmm. analyzed for our viewers two the evil features. The right. evil features. Yeah. To the novice like me, these weapons looked identical, mm -hmm. but they had one had a little bit of a nuanced feature. Correct. And a little nuanced, yeah. something that made it a little more comfortable to hold, mm -hmm. that made it an evil band weapon. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, in regards to that, like say, the Fitchburg Chief of Police would say, you know what, I think Maury Healy is completely wrong. If somebody is caught in this town, we're not going to charge him with it. Okay. With a with a with a, a, a possession a, possession of an assault weapon. Okay, um, a, a banned assault weapon that correct. she had on her list. Correct. So if you know we we voted ourselves that we are not uh, a uh, that we are a, a sanctuary city a two a sanctuary city, they would the the chief would have. The officers under orders. If you see a guy with this, he's not actually causing problems. We're not. We're not going to. We're not going to hold them to as violation of the law. No. Now the prob The problem starts is <clears throat> the district attorney's office because Moore Healy has already already told all the district attorney's offices, if you can bag somebody for a gun, even if they have no record whatsoever, if you can bag a lawful gun owner and get them, they're, you, they're not allowed to dismiss that case, no matter what. 
If there's a gun involved in the case, forget it. You're not going to get a dismissal. Okay, what does that... I, you, you just confused me. I don't exactly okay. know what you mean. All right, so the district attorney mm -hmm. in each of the different counties, so Worcester District Attorney... Which is Joe Worley. Uh, Joe Worley. His office has been told by the attorney general... Okay. You cannot dismiss any crime involving a gun, even if it's like an innocent mistake. Like you're walking down the street and somebody, um, you're concealing a firearm, which is lawful in, in Massachusetts. And say my jacket gets blown open by the, by the wind. And for a split second, somebody sees that I'm carrying a firearm and they get scared, they call the cops. Well, that's technically an assault. That's, According to the law, that's an assault. You put somebody in fear of their life. All right. Even though it's completely asinine that, oh my God, he's got a gun, I'm afraid. And here we had, we talked about Virginia, mm -hmm. over 20-something thousand people gathered openly with weapons, yep. and there were absolutely no there was problems no, There was no problems, no violence, no nothing. Apparently there's a lot of terrified people, though. Uh, <laughs> So then, if the wind blows, mm -hmm. you could be charged mm -hmm. for what for assault. For assault. If somebody, if somebody who does not like guns sees the the firearm on my belt, even though I'm carrying concealed, and even though split, you're fully licensed, I'm fully licensed. Else. If if they say I'm in fear, they call the cops. That's enough for an assault charge. And I've I've represented clients and, that, that have happened. And what to. would the ramifications potentially be? You're going to be charged. You're going to have to go to court, and you're going to have to pay an attorney to represent you. And you potentially could you lose your, your license yep. and your weapons. Yep. Yep. That's that's a, a good possibility. And of course, as we were saying before, you know some of some of these laws are discretionary. You know, I mean, just recently there was a person who, on video, assaulted assaulted somebody who was um, um, videotaping uh, in Fitchburg City Hall. That he assaulted that person, and he has not been charged because mm -hmm. the police officer had determined, well, I already know him, so I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to. Wasn't uh, a charge threat. Him. Wasn't right. Uh, right. It wasn't being done maliciously. Well, that's to be debated. That's to but. be debated. But what we, we really look at a lot of this is subjective. Mm -hmm. How we interpret a lot of things. So now, getting back to our Fitchburg, and we're just so we'll we'll say this isn't throwing the baby out with the bathwater. This is being picking and choosing certain things we want to hone in on. So we're honing in in Fitchburg on the uh, assault weapons. Mm -hmm. So Morgan owns his gun shop on Main Street in Fitchburg. Now, could Morgan then sell an mm -hmm. AR-15, which is listed under the assault weapons? Mm -hmm. Could Morgan sell me an AR? If, if I'm if, fully if licensed fully and licensed I and Fitchburg have is a two-way sanctuary community? Yes. Morgan, you're the FFL. Gosh, um, in theory, I could. Um, I'm going to preface this by saying, no matter what, I'm always going to go as an owner, as somebody who uh, does my best to distribute freedom. I, I've spent a lot of money and a lot of time talking to attorneys like like Mr. Kucher, mm -hmm. um, trying to find any way that we can we can get someone who lawfully is allowed to have a firearm a firearm. Um, to answer that question specifically, I, I, it, it's hard to say. You know, uh, personally, I want to say, heck yeah, we're gonna we're gonna start selling ARs in downtown Fitchburg if Fitchburg says it's okay. The alternate being, I have a state level license, so the state is still telling me no, you can't. So. State can take away my license. If the state takes away my license, then my distributors aren't going to sell to me anymore. Um, I can't get firearms to provide to you. However, if there's another way to get you that firearm that you can legally have in the state, uh, or, or at least in Fitchburg, I promise you we're going to figure out how to get it done. But I was also thinking, if Fitchburg is the only sanctuary city, it doesn't extend to Worcester County. It's mm -hmm. just we're, we're just Fitchburg. Just, yep. Working with Fitchburg here, then as a owner of this new assault wa weapon mm -hmm. that you sold me, I probably couldn't take it out of Fitchburg. You probably could not. Right. I would, I would, I would agree with that because as soon as you stepped out of the, uh, the, sanctuary. Second, the, the sanctuary, the 2A sanctuary, you would be then subjected to, like say you go to Lemonster and Lemonster refuses to become a, a 2A sanctuary city. Yeah. 
as soon as you step foot onto Lemonster, Lemonster property, then the police have the authority to say, well, that's an illegal weapon. Sure. You know, we're not sure. going to, you yeah. know, we're going to, we're going to charge you and arrest you. And so what you. is going to happen now? If it, now, well, let me just ask, because we, we've been using Fitchburg for the sake of clarifying mm -hmm. this argument. But this is a growing movement throughout yes. the country. Mm -hmm. This is this is not for our viewers. This is not something that's just happening in some rural areas way up in the mountains of Wyoming or a little bit up in the north tundra of Alaska. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is moving like wildfire across yeah, the mean, country it, based on the, the what was shown with the sanctuary city for immigration concept. This is now happening with two A sanctuary cities. Is it going to move into Massachusetts or is there any discussion of moving it into Massachusetts, taking it town by town, city by city, county by county? I don't think it's, uh, there's no organized group, and that's what's most important. There's no single organized group, unlike a Mike Bloomberg or someone like that who is who's personally anti-firearms and he's going to go out of his way. There's no, uh, think of it more as a tea party where it's, it's you live in Fitchburg, I live in Templeton, uh, Andrew lives in Fitchburg obviously also. Um, you guys are going to go to your friends and neighbors and say, hey, this is what I want to do. I'm going to do that uh, back home. Um, it's it's all individuals. There's no there's no centralized unit who is saying, hey, this is what we're going to do. We have a centralized unit that says that it's called the Constitution, um, but that's being disregarded right, as back of us. <laughs> we the people being disregarded as we are acutely aware. Which is why these movements are taking place at a at a very uh, a, a very level. grassroots level because it's individuals saying this is this is ridiculous. Yeah. I've had enough. You're I've had not, enough. You're I, I've had enough. On my rights. Right. Co uh, correct. I mean, if you take a look at the map of Virginia and all the counties that have declared themselves a Second, Amend a Second Amendment sanctuary city, or county, I should say, um, I mean, it's pretty much a majority of the map. It's I think the state. It's, it's pretty much the state, except for where the big cities are, Richmond. Uh, um, Richmond and Roanoke? Yeah, Roanoke or something Basically like that. Basically, the outskirts of D.C. Yeah. Our, yeah. our time is up, but I want a, a one... A one answer question. Is this going to go to the U.S. Supreme Court? I believe they're already discussing it. Yeah, I think they're bringing it up the Suez. More than one, one answer. <laughs> one, one word. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, one word is yes, I believe. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in with us tonight. And thank you, Morgan <laughs> and Andrew, for participating in this discussion because it does pertain to all of us. Um, I'd like to thank our viewers, and as always, we thank you for watching Your Right to Know and sitting in with the FRCC. As we leave you tonight, we want you to remember your local or city or town Republican committee is the only grassroots organization that supports and holds dear your constitutional rights and your conservative values. We encourage you to join us. Why? Because to us, the GOP stands for growth, opportunity, and prosperity for all people. And we always stand for freedom. And again, thank you, Workers Credit Union, for allowing us to use this lovely studio. Good night. America, we stand for freedom. So let us all you. Reflects our values, that preserves our rights, and goes forth in power and might. That reflects our values, and preserves our rights, and goes forth in power and might.